Hey, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, with a tip, a tip for all of you that are getting ready to start residency. So these are five tips to a successful start of your dental residency. Look, tip number one, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's a saying that, that has a lot of meaning. You're going to be doing some new things this year in your residency, some of which is the reason why you're doing your residency, right? So that you can learn new procedures, learn new uh, information, new uh, evidence-based information about procedures and different, uh, different ways of doing things. You're also going to be uncomfortable learning about some of this information, right? You, you've just graduated and you feel like, ah, oh, I don't feel like learning, I don't feel like being in a classroom, uh, I don't feel like going to lectures, but hey, this is all part of lifelong learning that's part of our profession that you have to do. So there's going to be some things like journal club, uh, 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 different types of assignments, um, using your clinical in encounters to, to research different procedures, all of which are part of the program. So you're going to have to do that. If you're going to be in a program where you're going to be on call, you're also going to be uncomfortable. Why? Because you never, you've never taken call before. So just wrap your head around the fact that this is a new experience for you. It's all part of your process and becoming uh, more confident and, and better as a clinician, all under the auspices of being better. So you're going to be uncomfortable, but be comfortable with that. No, meaning it's going to happen, right? Second thing, second tip to be successful during your dental residency, be a person who's teachable, who's coachable, and that can duplicate what is given to them, whether it be uh, an assignment, but also chair side instruction and hands on instructions, right? Again, another reason why you're here is so that you can learn, so people can teach you, teach you new procedures, teach you new ways of doing things. So don't don't afford don't put yourself in a situation where you don't afford yourself the full opportunity to be able to um, to hone your skills and also be able to be around other. Uh, more seasoned dentists that are going to help you through your uh, through your residency year. All right, so be teachable, be coachable. Third thing, third thing, probably one of the most important things I think is uh, being accountable. Being accountable. You're here for 365 days, maybe even more if you're doing a specialty program. You have to be accountable. If you if the lecture starts at eight, it starts at eight. If the lunch and learn is at 12, it's at 12. That means that's the time that you need to be there, all right? One of the things that you'll notice in transitioning from dental school to residency is that in most of these programs, you're also an employee, all right? If, especially if it's at a hospital-based program, you're also an employee of the hospital as a resident. So you have to understand that, you know, you have to uh, show up on time and be where you're supposed to be. Also, if you're told to do something or you're said you're, that you're going to do something, guess what? You have to be accountable. Um, it's all a part of being professional. So being accountable is very, very important. Also, fourth thing, communication. Communa, 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 communication. So big, guys. You got you, you to gotta have open lines of communication. Even when it's hard to communicate, even when you're running late to clinic, running late to class, or even for patients, right? Patients in the waiting area, someone has to go out there and say, hey, Miss Jones, I'm running late, um, just finishing up, whether it be your assistant, your front desk, communicate. You have to let people know if there's a delay or just simply by saying hi, saying hi to the assistant, saying hi to your other former residents. Communicate the power of the words, but also in, this, in addition to that, you have to make sure you're listening so that you can communicate effectively also. So communicate both the good and the bad. Um, and that, that also show how much of a team player you are uh, with patients and other co-residents and also with your faculty. Uh, fifth thing, fifth thing that I think is very, very important to be successful in your residency year. And I, I kind of mentioned it, but uh, being professional, all right? Being professional, keep your personal things, personal drama, personal situations 
outside and separate from you as the professional, as the provider, as the dental resident, all right? We all have problems. <laughs> we all have things, issues that plague us personally, but you need to, in, in this environment, you really have to be able to separate them. Put them over to the side. Don't include them as part of your residency. You can communicate them as needed to your program directors, to your chairman, your chiefs, people like that. But at the end of the day, you have to solve your own problems outside of the residency. Do Try not to allow those things to infiltrate and come into the professional environment. All right? So professionalism. Keep your problems and your professionalism separate. Got to keep those separate. And I'm sure there's a sixth one. I was going to give you a bonus one. Um, oh, man, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a sixth one. But as, as far as advice to have a successful year, just really write down. Write down the, the, the things that you want to accomplish, right? And I guess this could be the sixth thing. Actually, write down the things that you want to accomplish, your targets and goals for the year. And it's one thing to write them down, but you also have to revisit those on a weekly and a monthly or maybe even a, a quarterly basis to spend some time to reflect as to where you are with those goals and those targets for your residency. Very, very key because what you'll see in about 364 days after you start, time is gone. You've lost that time because the residency time that you're spending learning and interacting with people goes really, really fast. So keep track of the goals and the targets that you're setting them, but you also have to uh, uh, reflect and spend the time to reflect. So there you go. Five plus one. Five plus one. I gave you six tips to starting off your dental residency successfully. This is Dr. Darwin, a new dentist coach. If you have questions or want to hear more content or if you have ideas about content, always shoot me an email at newdentistcoach at gmail.com. Also, if you uh, have some problems or issues on conflicts or things that you want to get some solutions to and you want some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Send me an email, same address, new dentist coach, subject line, coach me. Uh, and I'll be here to, to coach you along the way, uh, whether on a monthly basis or more of a quarterly basis or on a yearly basis. All right. Thanks again, guys. And good luck with your residency, uh, residency year this year. Take care. See you on the next video.